Hello and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the City of Hampton's Communications and Marketing Department. And today we're going to talk a little bit about sailing, but specifically sailing for young folks. My guest is one of the United States' premier sailing um, experts, and he lives right here in Hampton. Gary Bodie, welcome. Well, thank you. Good to be here. It's actually a thrill to meet you. I remember reading your bio on the uh, Virginia Peninsula Athletic Hall of Fame. Um, it's exciting. So just tell us a little bit about your background. You're a Hampton Crabber. You're born here. Um, but your experience in sailing took you all over the place. I, I was born in Norfolk. We moved to Hampton when I was uh, about 12 years old, and uh, I learned how to sail. My family wasn't sailors, so I kind of came to it on my own, uh, learned how to sail, and then ended up making a career out of it. I coached college for 20 years at Old Dominion, the Naval Academy, and then I came home to help start the first um, team at a historically black college and university at Hampton University. Then I had the opportunity to go with the U.S. team and the Olympic program for 10 years, and I couldn't turn that down. So No, absolutely not. So you were all over then. Once I, I spent 10 years with the U.S. team, three Olympic games, traveled all over the world uh, for practice and regattas, literally everywhere. It was a wonderful 10 years. And then after, um, after China, after Beijing in 2008, I figured that 30 years of coaching was about enough, so I've settled down and uh, just sailing locally now. So you are also then working with Youth Sailing Virginia, which is the main thing we're talking about today. Yes. And that's a volunteer effort. You're, you're giving your time. Why? Oh, you know, it, it's, it's fun. It's, it's for the kids. And it's giving something back to, you know, to my passion, sailing, that's been so good for me, um, you know, both personally and as my profession. I see it more as, you know, for, for the vast majority of people, it's more about a lifetime sport, something you can do as a child and continue to do. And it can, you know, it can always evolve into boating and fishing and, and, and other kinds of, of water activities. And I'm so passionate about it, I just want to give back a little bit. Well, as you know, City Council has been spending a lot of time talking about economic development and growth in the area. And, and one of those components is sense of place and amenities. You know, people want to live somewhere that gives them a quality of life. And you have to look at Hampton and say, OK, 124 miles of waterfront. Now, you know, that's creeks, rivers, bays, all kinds of stuff. That is such a huge asset. And those of us maybe who didn't grow up here or aren't, you know, sailing isn't always as accessible to everybody. And part, that's part of what youth sailing is doing. It is. You know, sometimes there's limited access to the water. There's, there's limited access to, um, to boats and instruction. And, you know, sailing is still somewhere, you know, maybe like golf and tennis were 25, 30 years ago. Oh, right. Yeah. You know? Where you and, think country clubs, not accessible yes, to me. You know, and, and, I, and so what we've done at Hampton University is to start a program, a very successful college sailing program. Uh, I think this is a, now an extension of that. And they've done well. That team has done very they've well. They've done very well and a very competitive college sailing. If I can just digress for a, for a moment, you know, the, the local sailing here is incredibly strong in that uh, Chris Bame at Georgetown, a local sailor from Hampton, was College Sailor of the Year. I mean, the Heisman Trophy of college sailing. Wow. And just last week, a Norfolk sailor um, uh, from Graham Landy from Norfolk that did the local high school sailing was named College Sailor of the Year, Heisman Trophy of our sport for Yale University. So the kids that are doing high school sailing here are going on to these very competitive uh, college programs, Hampton University, one of them, and Old Dominion, another, and locally, Christopher Newport. And you might have had a little to do with that. <laughs> you know, Old Dominion was my, my first coaching job straight out of college. I, I still, that's where my heart is. Everywhere I've coached, the, the truth is my heart is still with Old Dominion. But I'm very gratified you know, to see Hampton University, Christopher Newport, and, and William & Mary has, a, has quite a strong program. So it's, uh, it's maybe not a well-known sport in this area, but it's actually fairly widespread. And it's a natural, you know, to get back to your, to your comments, it's a natural for a city like Hampton. You know, the city just adopted this new logo, I think, a year or two ago. You know what's in that logo? There's a sailboat. <laughs> I mean, we need to put that up on the screen. But it, I think it's a great choice for the city because it captures, you know, a little bit of our history and our culture and our water access. And, you know, water access to different things to different people. It's beaches and fishing piers. 
right, it's, right. it's canoeing and kayaking, paddling and sailing. Um, but it's all it's all boating. It's all water access. It is, and I think you know it just it adds so much to the quality of life here. And it's one of the things that hooks you and makes you not want to leave. And you want to hook kids when they're young or maybe not that young, but maybe a little bit older. And you've been working with the high school teams in the area, and you actually did start out at HU's sailing facility, but, but you guys have outgrown that. Yes, you know, some of the high school teams were practicing at Hampton University. Some were at Hampton uh, Yacht Club practicing. And, and then Pocosin and York County are working on smaller facilities. All of the Norfolk teams practice at Norfolk Yacht Club. And if, in truth, we're outgrowing, you know, our, our, the use of those facilities, uh, it really, it's growing in the entire, you know, area, uh, the Tidewater area from, from Norfolk all the way to Richmond. And so this is the next, the next phase, partly for practice facilities, but also for competitive facilities on weekends that we'll have, they, they compete almost every Saturday at, um, during the spring and then again in the fall. And so most of the, uh, all of the events currently have been at, at Norfolk Yacht Club with one or two per season at Christchurch, uh, which is up in, you know, near right, Urbana. Right, Middlesex. Um, and so this will give us another venue for competitive events. It will also enable us to bring in, you know, so not just the regional teams, but hopefully some of the uh, Annapolis teams, you know, some of the greater mid-Atlantic teams to come visit and sail. So it's... Uh, and that essentially is what gets to the root of why City Council has agreed to support this effort. Um, they're, they're not giving the money to you. It's a public facility, but a larger pier with floating docks for boats will be built out at Fort Monroe on that Mill Creek side. Yes. And, um, and you guys will help use it, um, as the rest of us will, too. We can go out there and rent a boat. We can rent a kayak. I mean, the, the community center is going to um, have boat rentals there, which makes it accessible to everyone. Um, their prices, I'm sure, will be um, competitive and, and easy yes. to afford. But there's an economic advantage to you guys holding these races on the weekends, bringing people into town, putting them in our hotels where we get tax revenues, eating at our restaurants. You know, maybe they have a little time to shop while they're here as well, um, and, and helping Hampton grow. Yes, I mean, you know, it's, it, it, the, the growth when we see these events over in Norfolk on the weekends has been, you know, I did it with my, started coaching with my oldest daughter who's now 25 and then again, I went away for a few years and came back with my youngest daughter and there was such a much bigger crowd, you know, that part of why we're outgrowing. So all the parents, coaches, friends, family that come along to these events, um, you know, it, it works out to, uh, you know, it's not hundreds and hundreds of people, but it's a, it's a nice little crowd and it's an all day event. So, um, you know, pizzas and lunches and restaurants are a natural uh, extension. And, you know, we have some great partners. Uh, we're, we're very grateful for the city with their stepping forward. Uh, but the Fort Monroe Authority has been very helpful. And we're also in discussion with the, the new STEAM Academy uh, because you know, they're going to need recreational activities for those students. Yeah. And, and sailing is a perfect, you know, club sport for a small school like that. Uh, because only you know, if you have just a few kids from the school that have some experience and a few that want to learn, uh, you actually only need four starters. So it's not like not like building a football team at a school. Right, right. So it's a natural for um, for we think the STEAM Academy to uh, have sailing as a recreational activity and as a sport. We're also in discussion with the YMCA. They already have a presence at um, at Fort Monroe as well as the Hampton Community Center. So I think that uh, there's a ready-made audience, and our reception with each of these partners has been just fantastic, uh, very, very supportive. Good. Well, that sounds exciting. Gary, is there anything you want to say before? Um, be well, let me ask you this. I I've heard Kevin Ely from the organization talk about um, Hampton Roads, or particularly Hampton, as you know, a sailing center that we could be we have actually better waters sometimes than Annapolis. I mean, that our natural um, assets here make it a great place. You have sailed and coached all around the world. Where do you put Hampton and its potential in, in that? You know, it's, it's true. I love Annapolis, and Annapolis is one of the meccas of, of sailing and boating. But mm -hmm. the truth is, the wind doesn't blow in Annapolis in the, in the summertime. You know, be, you oh. know, and we get the beauty of this area is we get the ocean sea breeze. 
So when you feel that cool easterly coming into Buckrow, you know, during the summertime and the temperature drops, that's like perfect sailing weather at three, four o'clock in the afternoon. It's cooler, it's nice. And that sea breeze just doesn't get to Annapolis because of the land mass of the eastern shore. And it's so far up the bay. Mm -hmm. So in many respects, it's, it's in any given day, it's a little windier here uh, than Annapolis. And, I, and it's a great place to sail. And this Mill Point, you know, the funniest thing is, here we are, lifetime sailors. We've been around forever. Nobody sails inside at Mill Creek. And we all thought it was too shallow. And when Glenn Oder and the Fort Monroe Authority suggested it, we said, no, 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 that's no good. It's too shallow. We can't sail there. And he insisted we go check it out. And it's not too shallow for the small boats that for we want to use. small boats, yeah. And, and it's a little more protected for the youth. Beginners, it, maybe it's, not it's, just youth. I could be a beginner, too. It's ideal because, you know, you, there's not a whole lot of buildings on Fort Monroe out towards Dog Beach and, mm -hmm. and that area. So the wind blows across the land unobstructed onto this smooth water protected body. So you get the wind without, without you know, the, the more difficult yeah. waves. Great. Okay. Well, thank you. And we're going to take a very short break and come back with two of your kids from the Youth Sailing Program. Excellent. Thank you, Gary. Thank, thank you, you very much for coming. And thank you. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We are here with two high school sailors, Anna Patterson and Nielsen Woodfield. Welcome. Thank nice, you. Nice to be here. Let me start with you, Anna. How did you get involved in sailing? Um, I started sailing when my brother started the Hampton High team and needed some more recruitments. <laughs> so you, were, you were an athlete yes. at that time, but weren't sailing. Correct. And so you just got pulled in, and then what happened? Um, I fell in love with it, and I can't stop. <laughs> So it was not hard for you to learn to sail? No. You just sort of fell into it and were a natural? Correct. Um, do you intend to pursue this like the rest of your life? Is it going to be hope, a hobby? I hope to go on to college sailing, but um, I have no idea. It'll always be a hobby of mine. I know that. So how does youth sailing Virginia help? It helps getting kids involved and get them active. It's Sailing is just an amazing sport. It's fun. Yeah. Now, Nielsen, how about you? Uh, my grandfather was a big boater, and my, uh, it skipped my mom and dad, but my grandfather saw a program at the Hampton Yacht Club down the street and said he would offer to pay for the first year, and I did it, and I liked it a lot. So I've been doing it for eight years now. And you're on Phoebus High School's team. Yes, ma'am. Now, I'm going to guess out there a lot of our audience doesn't know that Hampton High School and Phoebus High School have a team. Um, Kikatan <laughs> has a team. And that, I think, has been around a little bit longer. I think Kikatan is more well-known. Yeah. yeah. How many kids are on your team? Uh, six or seven, which is actually a lot, considering it's only our second year as a team. In our first year, we had three or four. Mm -hmm. So. Those kinds of sports grow. I mean, I remember when Phoebus's uh, swim team only had about six kids, and they actually took a vote. Did they want to merge with another school, or did they want to stay Phoebus? And they voted to stay Phoebus, and it's grown now. You know, there's 25, mm -hmm. almost 30 kids in it. Those things can build on each other if, if you guys go out and recruit. Why is sailing a good sport for, for people your age? It's just a new type of sport. It's uh it involves a lot of knowledge. It actually helps, like it helps me understand stuff like physics. Aha! Uh -huh. uh, yeah. I was gonna when Gary was talking about using the STEAM Academy, the Science Academy kids. Yeah. I thought, well, it really ties into tides and wind speeds well, and all actually, kinds of things. Most of our kids are from the STEM side of our programs at Phoebus, like our engineering programs. I, that would make sense. That's such so, a good fit. Yeah. So it actually helps you um, in your education. Yeah, it does. It also, you know, any sport tends to help kids, motivate kids to do better. You have to keep up a certain GPA to stay in sporting. Mm -hmm. um, it, it does tie in. What about you, Anna? Um, You're a good student anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely learn a lot through the physics of sailing, how, it, how the boat moves and cooperates with the environment around it, and it really helps. There's also probably a certain amount of environmental education and knowledge that you pick up, if not directly, at least that appreciation for clean air, clean water, and what's going on in, in our outside environment. Yeah, yeah, you kind of start to learn how having big buildings can sometimes mess with the environment, because I know that gets in our way when we try to sail. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the wind doesn't blow because there's big buildings, and um, you just learn about a lot of the water and how certain stuff affects it. 
So what do you tell your fellow students? If you're, if you're recruiting for the sailing team, why do you, um, what is your pitch? How do you try to convince them to join? It's a little complicated sometimes because just explaining the basics of the sport to them can get kind of confusing for them. But um, I mainly bring in our team. Our team is a, we're basically a family at this point. And uh, I bring that in and then they come in with you know, basic knowledge and we put them with a good skipper and we show them the ropes and then if they like it, they stay. Anna, what about you? What, what is the best thing about sailing? Like if you were telling somebody, here's why you should learn this mm -hmm. or here's why you should join the team, what would that be? It's absolutely just a blast to be out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that makes sense. You know, I think that's one of the big attractions for being on the water. You said your parents have motorboats. I mean, it yeah. is. You don't get, I grew up inland, you don't get that anywhere else. It's one of the things that we in Hampton can offer people and can hopefully attract people to want to come back here and live. Um, and, and sailing's just one piece of that. Right. So are you guys going to be involved in the uh, youth camps that they're going to have and some of the regattas and, and races that they're going to have at, at on Mill Creek? I believe so. I would uh, hope to be. Good. Well, we, we hope that you'll stick around and that you will help the program grow and recruit us some more kids. <laughs> That's what we're trying to do. All right. Well, good luck and thanks for coming by today. And good luck, both of you, in your um, high school sailing seasons next year. Thank you. thank you. And thank you for watching. I hope you've learned a little bit. And as soon as that new pier gets built out at Fort Monroe, um, you'll be out there renting a boat or cheering on some of these high school students as they race. Thank you for watching.